Hi everyone, welcome. Today we have another exciting guest with us and she is probably mostly known as Lone Star Keto Girl. Her name is Amber. Some of you might recognize her, I don't actually know, but she's very, very active on Instagram where she is sharing a lot of intelligent and very easy to understand information about the low carb way of eating. She's also a certified Meet RX carnival coach and she has I actually discovered she has a podcast that I've never known about before together with Brett Lloyd. So welcome to the show, Amber. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. There are a lot of people posting on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube everywhere about tips and tips, tip, tips and tricks, tip, tip, tips and tricks <laughs> of how to eat. <laughs> The, in a low carb way or a carnivore way, uh, what to eat, what they are eating, etc. But you really actually stood out to me because the amount of really, really good posts that you are putting out, they're very intelligent, they're very easy to understand, and they make a lot of sense. There's not a lot of nonsense on your social media, and that really stood out to me. That's why I was asking you if you want to come on. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So it's quite obvious to me that you you know what you're talking about and that's why I would like to take advantage of that and just ask you a little bit about your knowledge, your experience when you're people, eh, when you're coaching people. It's too early for me today, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> so before we start with that, because I don't actually know your background very well, do you mind telling us a little bit about your background, how you discover this way of eating and why you decided to become a coach? Oh, sure. Um, I'll, I'll try to do a brief version because <laughs> it's actually spans 40 years. So that's a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I started out, gosh, when I was like 10 years old and um, already mm. realizing that I kind of maybe had a weight issue or whatever, or that I was different. And um, so it kind of started me down a road of yo-yo dietings, for, for 40 years. And I always did it the same exact way for the most part. I mean, I tried every diet out there, but it's still the same thing. You, you, you know, restrict your calories, you know, because yeah. it's always about calories in calories out. So you exercise your booty off and you cut your calories down as much as you can. Right. That was the thing. You eat lots of salads, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's, you know, different versions, you know, and I, I, I did, you know, like the, the slim fast and, um, yeah, anything out there. And I was also doing, you know, like diet pills and laxatives as well. Um, by the time I was 15, I was bulimic and anorexic. Wow. So I was uh, dealing with eating disorders and, uh, you know, just yo-yoing this whole entire time and dealing with eating disorders and et cetera. And gosh, when I was, I, it, that just continued. I, I've lost like 80 to a hundred pounds four different times in my life. And that does not even include all the times I lost 10, 15, 20, even 50 pounds. That's pff, nothing. I mean, that was a drop of a hat. That was easy for me. Um, I, I never had an issue losing the weight. Never, never. I could do it. You know, no matter what I could do it, I, I could even, and of course I was anorexic. I could go for a very long time without eating and I didn't want to put anything in my mouth. It was a little bit different. It's not the same thing as fasting because it's a very mental thing. And yeah. you know, you, you're afraid of food. You don't, you know, you don't want anything in your mouth. It's just, it's a different kind of thing, but uh, so I don't want people to get that confused. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so um at the time I would start, uh, I would hit my goals. I knew that that's really where my journey began, that this is where I was going to struggle. It wasn't the weight loss. That was easy. Well, I mean, I'm not saying it was fun, but I could do it. Yeah. It was the maintaining it. And why? Because there is no way I could live the rest of my life eating that crap that I had to eat in order to maintain, you know, I couldn't do it. And I don't care what anybody says. Yes, a diet indicates that there is an ending point, but uh, let's get real. That's not the way it works. It's just not the way it works. You have to continue to eat that way or a similar way <laughs> because if you go back to what you were doing to get that way in the, in the first place, yeah. Well, okay. So that that's why this happened. Every time I would lose the weight, I would gain it back. 
loose game, loose game. It was just this ridiculous yo-yo thing. And uh, when I was like 17 or the summer before my senior year, um, I weighed a whopping 98 pounds. So <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, about that time, shortly after I, I had to confront, you know, the issues I was having with my eating disorders and I was able to pretty much deal with that. And you know, that was okay. It's always in the back of my mind, e even today, but you know, I, I never did those things again. Um, but, uh, then in my twenties, I was okay. And then I had my kids and I found out I was gestational diabetic and that kind of, you know, makes you have to do things that differently than what you were doing. I, I had to eat, you know, six times a day and it had to be this very specific things I was eating. Anyway, by the time I had my kids, I actually weighed less than when I first got pregnant. Wow. <laughs> so I lost weight through the process. Yeah, it was crazy. Both kids. And uh, so you can't really blame that part. But <laughs> The thing is, I was told that because I was gestational diabetic, there was a really good chance I would become uh, it, diabetic at some point in my life if I didn't, you know, be careful what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> so apparently that wasn't enough for me, but uh, I, you know, gained, lose, gained, lose a couple more times, big times, you know, and mm -hmm. then I started having these really bad health issues coming into my 40s, like pretty severe, and and I knew I had issues. I just didn't want to confront it. I didn't want to see a doctor about it. I didn't want to admit it. I, you know, I mean, I knew I was obese. I was huge. Uh, I weighed over 240 pounds. I'm only five foot two. And I say 240 because I have no clue because I probably weighed 30 more pounds than that. It, that's just the, the first weight that I, after I started losing weight that I saw. And so, you know, that was, that, that was in 2008. That was my heaviest. And, um, so all these health issues started happening and I ended up having to go to the doctor and uh, to, for something totally unrelated. And so I wasn't worried about all that, but they do the typical stuff where they check your blood pressure and all that. Well, mine was so, so sky high that the nurse's eyes got huge and said, you know, oh, honey, I'm going to need you to lay down and you need to be really calm. And I was like, what next thing you know the doctor's coming in technicians the ekg machine i'm getting strapped up and being fed medication and told that if if the my blood pressure didn't go down enough in 30 minutes they were admitting me to the hospital and all this kind of stuff and i'm like Ugh. you know so that was kind of a slap in the face and from that point things just went downhill i found out i was pre-diabetic I had severe acid reflux to the point where it was like coming back up into my throat. Like, I mean, I just barely leaned back and just like a gush of liquid acid. I mean, it was awful. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah. And I, I had that, I, I took Nexium for eight years every single day to deal with that. And I was told I would be on it the rest of my life because everything was so messed up. I had to have, you know, the, the rotor rooter is what I like to call it, uh, where you have an endoscopy this way and that way, you know, and to try to find out what was going on with me because I was severely anemic and it was just a mess. Anyway, uh, the pre-diabetes part out of everything scared the crap out of me. So it made me get on the ball again <laughs> to lose weight. Ah, and I did it through Weight Watchers. Yay, the best, right? right? You know, it, it's, it's a balanced, everything in moderation, right? Yeah. Okay. I lost the weight. Not a problem. I lost 100 pounds that time. Not a problem. But when I met my goal, <laughs> yeah, you can guess what happened. Because you know what? That diet sucked. It, it yeah. just sucked. And so I couldn't maintain it and I started gaining weight again, but I caught myself before I got to my heaviest and I lost like, I don't know, 60, 80 pounds, whatever. And then I gained it again, but I caught myself before I got to the highest of that weight. And, uh, you know, it was this, but I was doing the same things yeah. and thinking I was going to get a different result, thinking I was the problem. I didn't have enough willpower it was my issue that, you know, obviously I'm just doing something wrong. And it, it was the most frustrating thing. And when I got to that point, I, I was just ready to give up. I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm going to be fat and unhealthy. Mm. I, I don't know what else to do. I, I can't keep doing this. 
and then my daughter, my daughter decided to try uh, this, this special product. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it one more, one more try, just one more. That's it. And then I'm done. I'm just done. I'm just <laughs> going to be fat. I'm done. And so uh, it, it was exogenous ketones. I had never heard of ketones. I had never heard of ketosis. I had never heard of the keto diet. Never heard those words before. And I research diets and, you know, I've, like I said, I've tried pretty much everything, right? Why hadn't I heard that? I thought that was just so bizarre. But this taking this product within just a couple of days, I, the only way I can describe it is euphoria. I felt this immense relief. I felt happy. I, because I was so depressed and feeling awful, you know, and the health, eh. but I felt like all of that was lifted off of me and I was so happy and I wasn't hungry. I wasn't hangry. I wasn't, you know, miserable. And my husband even noticed it. He was like, yeah, this is different. I'm not sure what this is, but I, I was just like, what is this miracle thing? You know? And so I started researching what in the world is ketones? And when I started learning more and more, I, I read every book I could get my hands on and every single thing I could come across. And I was just more and more intrigued that you could actually get your body to do the same thing and make you feel the same way as that product did. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is way too cool. And <laughs> so that's how I got into keto. I immediately kind of started merging more into keto and cut more and more carbs. I had already got rid of like sugar and stuff like that because everybody knows that, right? Mm. But who would know that all this other stuff that you're told is so healthy, like oatmeal and cereals and, you know, whole grain bread and bananas and all this crap um, that is supposed to be so good for you, <laughs> you know, and but so potassium. And that was still in there. <laughs> yeah, because that's what we're told. That's what, you know, is hammered in our head since we're little, you know, and so that, that kind of took me to the whole keto journey. And because I had this, it was almost, it felt like a miracle. I mean, yeah. it was just this amazing thing, like, you know, this, this perfect drug or something. And, and because I had never heard of it, I was like, how many people have never heard of this? Mm. So I, I felt it was my mission <laughs> to let everybody know, you know, and it, it is more mainstream now, but at the time he really he just didn't, it was like in a little community and I wasn't part of that community yet. Cause I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know it existed. Yeah. And so I dedicate a lot of my time to getting the word out. And, you know, now I'm carnivore. Um, it, I, I just, whatever I just decided to kind of merge in there and there's a whole nother store if you want to hear about that but that's how it got me to keto so okay that's about as short as I can get it yeah so so tell us about the story of how you got into carnivory because I, I think almost everyone is not everyone but most people are going through keto and then to carnivore is very few people that kind of take the leap and go from a standard American diet into a carnivore diet they be in a world of hurt at first that's for sure yeah because it sure makes a difference but there are people yes I do know people who who do that but I do think of uh, quite a few people have at least been low carb mm -hmm. before they merge into yeah. carnivore but you know you have those crazies that will do that yeah. you know I I'm not one I, I kind of need to gradually do something and not just bam that makes but sense. uh yeah I I was uh two years into keto and I had already phased out quite a bit of stuff. Like I, I started out where I did the keto desserts, the fat bombs. I never did the fat coffee, um, but I, I did a lot of that. I even have a, a website. I still have it. And it has my recipes that I created for keto, trying to reproduce some of the things that I loved, which I think, you know, it worked for me. It helped me. Some people maybe need to just completely stay away from it, but it helped me kind of, you know, transition through yeah through everything. Cause by the time I was two years in, I had phased a lot of that out already. And I, and I, cause I just didn't care. I didn't have the cravings. I didn't have the desire. I was more eating for the nutrition part of it. Not that I didn't enjoy my food because I absolutely did. And I still do. It's just, it wasn't that 
thing nagging constantly at me going food, food from the second I woke up to the second I went to bed and hell, I probably even dreamed about it. You know, I mean, it was ridiculous that 24 seven food. Yep. Well, when I went keto, sometimes I would just forget to eat. And that's okay because if you're not hungry and your body's not saying, Hey, wake up, you know, whatever, then you don't need to eat. So I was down to one meal a day, uh, by the, by two years. Well, actually it was like eight months into it. I was eating one meal a day and I did that for, you know, up to the two year mark. And it was super easy for me. Not a problem. Well, my friend Brett, who I do the, uh, keto board cast podcast with, he was a carnivore and we named our podcast keto war cast because the combination of keto and carnivore he was going to be the carnivore person i was going to be the keto person you failed <laughs> and that that was kind of what we were going to do well then he he just kept messing with me and going oh you know you're going to end up carnivore why don't you just try carnivore well i was still on one medication i i got rid of almost all my medications on keto i was on four different medications for my blood pressure and I was wow. down to one small one and no diuretic. And I was off my Nexium. But I also had rosacea, which was pretty bad. I had some other issues. I, I didn't talk about all of that. But most of my issues were gone on keto. Mm -hmm. Except for I had a little bit of rosacea, a little bit of blushing like on my nose, a little bit through my cheeks. And uh, I was on still one small dose of blood pressure medication. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to advocate for this way of life, of living, uh, low carb spectrum, I might as well just experience the whole spectrum from low carb all the way to carnivore. What the heck was it going to hurt? So I did it. And within a couple of days, I had the most amazing experience of zero digestive issues. I thought that I was normal on keto mm -hmm. because it was so much better than when I was on the other diets. But I didn't realize just how much the the plant-based foods were causing me issues, specifically the fiber. And within just a few days, I was like, holy crud, I have zero gas, like zero gas. I have no bloating, zero, zero, and no more constipation. What? And this was, like I said, within the first few days, the same. <laughs> I say that with keto too, but it's true. Yeah. It was like one of my body apparently was like, yeehaw, you know, <laughs> and real happy about it. So I, I was kind of almost shocked, but I don't really know why, because it makes complete sense. But that was one thing that just really stuck out of my mind as being, you know, so amazing that what I thought was normal, it wasn't normal. I had no idea what good digestion was. I didn't know. And you're told, oh, it's normal if you poop, you know, 500 times a day. That's normal. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not. Not if you're eating a species appropriate diet. I'm sorry. It's not. And that's like one of the biggest things when you hear people say, and it's kind of funny, but you know, the number one is digestive issues. That's what I hear the most. Not that there's not a lot of other stuff, but one of the most common things I hear is about digestion, mm -hmm. but it makes complete sense if you, yep. you know, think about it all because it's the easiest digestible, you know, it, it, you hear, oh, it rots in your gut. Uh, I got news for you. It doesn't even make it that far to be able to rot. It's the plant crap that's rotting in your gut. It's fermenting, but you know, nice try. <laughs> so yeah. And that, so that's how I ended up with carnivore and it, it just was easy. Simplified my life so much, mm -hmm. you know, not having to reproduce all that other stuff and, you know, the cauliflower rice and then making these <laughs> special sauces and, you know, bleh, all that kind of stuff. It was just so much easier and now I'm just kind of spoiled because it's easy. And when I do have to like make a little bit more, I'm like, ugh, I have to go dirty up another pan and then I have to wash it and, uh, and makes my house stink. And, you know, it's just kind of, I'm just used to it now and, and I'm content and I feel good. So, you know, I just kind of stayed. What ended up be, was supposed to be an experiment ended up being something that at the, at, for now, I mean, I'll, I'll never say that I won't evolve and, and, you know, need to do something different, but for the time being, you know, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. So yeah. do you think okay, you're ever going to, that part. <laughs> yeah, sorry, do you think you're ever going to try raw carnival? Um, no, I mean, I have tried raw meat. I, I don't find it, um, 
appetizing, yep. uh, palatable. Um, I can do it. Uh, matter of fact, that's probably the best way to eat liver is raw because that stuff is nasty. I don't like it. I've tried all different kinds of ways. The least offensive way is raw, but the texture is, you know, so yeah, I'm not a fan of liver in any way, shape or form, but yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah. uh, Did I answer the question or did I go? (laughs) I think so. No, it's just because you mentioned that you wanted to try carnivore because you're going to, you know, help people eat this way so I just thought maybe yeah. you wanted to go into the the raw land as well yeah well <laughs> you know the thing is is I I find it it's I don't know it's weird when you're trying to uh help somebody and explain things to them if you've never experienced it yeah. like you know you you can based on what you read and what you learn, of course. I mean, doctors do that all the time. You know, there are male doctors who's never experienced birth, but you know, (laughs) it, it, there's something to having experience and being able to talk about it experience wise, as well as, you know, book wise, if you will. Yeah. So totally agree. So when did you decide to become a coach and what, why did you make that decision? Well, um, because Sean Baker, um, probably most people know who he is, Dr. Sean Baker. Um, he started a new platform, Meet RX, and um, I, I'm a, I, I, I adore Sean. I think he's done so much for the community. He has my loyalty. I love his philosophy. I think, you know, because he is not dogmatic, and, you know, that won me over immediately. And so I started kind of helping out behind the scenes with Meet RX. And then I found out about they were going to do a coaching program to get certified. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that. That sounds cool. I would love to help people more one-on-one. So I I took the certification and I enjoyed that so much. I went ahead and did the fasting one too. So I'm also a fasting coach as well. So um, it's just another way to be able to help people, you know, even more. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's really fun. I, I enjoy talking with people and, and kind of helping them through because I've already had the experience. And so, you know, based and my knowledge too, and, you know, the certification, it, you know, put it all together and it's so much more helpful, I think, to people, you know, than just saying, oh, just eat some meat, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. And, I, and I'm currently actually uh, doing a nutrition certification as well, and also a body image class. That's, it's not technically a certification. It's kind of like a continuing education type of course. Mm-hmm. But if you're like a coach or something like that, they let you take this too to kind of supplement what you're doing. And because I struggle with the, you know, the eating disorders and all that kind of stuff, I decided to do that too. So it just kind of adds more to my toolbox, you know, yeah. to, to try to help more people. You know, I've, I've experienced all this, but now, you know, I just wanted more education. So I make sure that I can take that experience and apply it correctly, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah so that makes a lot of sense. I didn't even know you could take body image classes. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Can. Yeah. It's very and, important. Yeah, absolutely. I think most people to some degree had a little bit skewed view of their own body image. <laughs> very much so, especially women, not that men yeah. can't, but yeah, it's very prominent in women. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Absolutely. So what is the most common reason that people are hiring you as a coach? Mm. Uh, yeah, I was about to go into that, but I knew you were going to ask me that question. So I waited, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, the people look for different things, but I will say that 95% of the people who come to me don't, are not asking, how do you actually do the diet? Not really. They may have, they have some questions and stuff, but really what they're looking for is some guidance and to let them know that, yes, you're on the right track. Um, Yes. You know, support uh, somebody to be accountable to somebody to understand why maybe they're having issues with certain things. And that's where the whole um, emotional and mental part come in that I find is more of an issue than the diet. So they're looking for somebody to basically kind of be a friend to kind of help guide them at the same time. 
somebody who has experience, somebody who has a little bit of knowledge too to help them. But they really just need that hand holding for a little bit because most of these people don't have the support around them. Think about it. How many people, you know, scoff when they hear, oh, you only eat meat? Oh, well, that's not very healthy. You know, that meat's going to rot in your gut and your, and your arteries are going to harden and, you know, that's stupid and whatever. So these people feel like they're just, you know, in the middle of a sea and, and no lifeboat around because, you know, people just don't understand and they haven't done the research. They haven't experienced it. They haven't tried it. So they just go by what they've been told. And, you know, I was there too. I get it. I get it. I did the same thing. So, you know, it, I think really and truly support is the number one reason. Yeah, that's interesting. So do you see a lot of people struggling when they're switching over to a carnivore diet? Or is- they, yeah, they struggle for a, a lot of different reasons, but it's not really so much the diet itself that's causing problems. I mean, sometimes they have some physical things like, mm-hmm. oh gosh, I have a little bit of diarrhea or, you know, I'm constipated now or, you know, those kind of things. Or when I eat eggs, it makes me sick. You know, there's, there's some things like that. But for the most part, it's like, how do I deal with uh, my sugar cravings? I, I just want sugar. I, I, I just, you know, I, I, I go for a couple of days and I do really good. And then I have to have a cookie or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there, that's kind of more of the, the issues that I'm seeing it is, is more, it's, it's again, back to support. Yeah. So if I come to you and I say, oh my God, I've been doing this for five days and I've been doing really well, but now I'm about to die because I need sugar. What would you tell me? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, okay. Here, there's, you know, and see, you have to know the background of of the person. Like, are they coming from keto or are they coming from the standard American diet? Do they have, you know, some kind of underlying issues uh, like, you know, eating disorders or been, you know, like binge eating or, or you know, how uh, carb addicted are they? Um, are they fat adapted yet? And the people who aren't fat adapted have a harder time with the sugar cravings, obviously, because you kind of have to wean it out. And like what I think personally, uh, what I see is when people have these issues and they feel like they can't control if you give them a little a couple of things to work on little steps Mm -hmm. then it helps them instead of it being this big huge thing and it's like you know giving them permission you know what you're gonna make mistakes okay learn from it when you had that sugar craving and you gave in what were you feeling at the time were you bored were you upset uh you know write down what it is you were feeling when, when you did that. And then after you had that, what did you feel? And you kind of, you know, try to help them uh, have a different relationship with the food. And of course, you know, there's the obvious, you know, don't put sweet tastes in your mouth, you know, like if, if they continually have these cravings and they're having dairy, say, hmm. and they're eating a lot of dairy, that can continue to trigger uh, the, the sweet taste yeah. and, and make you crave. So some people have to eliminate dairy. And so that's one of the things, of course, I ask, you know, are you having dairy? Are you doing sweeteners in your coffee? Uh, You know, those kind of things and weed that part out and then make sure they're eating enough. A lot of times because they've come from a background of calorie restriction, like most of us have, because that's what you're supposed to do. Calories in, calories Mm -hmm. out. You should do, you know, you create a deficit. So don't eat very much. Ah, And so they, are scared to actually eat the way they should be eating. And especially women, they have a really hard time with that because, you know, salads for so many years trying to diet and stuff. And then here somebody's telling them, no, you keep eating until you get to the point where you don't want to chew another bite. That doesn't mean you're full. Like, you know, you are at Thanksgiving dinner 
like you used to do in the past or whatever. No, there's a difference. It's one of those where you get so nutrient filled that your body shuts it down and you're like, you're enough. It's not that you're because of the stretch receptors in your belly getting all yeah. pushed out to say in your pool, it's a different feeling because it's your body telling you you're done. We got enough of nutrients now. So you're, you're chill and they don't understand that. So, you know, trying to work with them to understand it's okay. It's okay. Eat until you're not hungry anymore. It's okay. You don't have to starve on this diet. As a matter of fact, you should not ever be starving on this diet. You should eat until you're full and you should not need to eat again for like six hours when you have your next meal. And some people go longer and that's fine too. And some people, you know, may need three meals. Some people two. There's even people who have one meal. I'm a two meal a day person. Um, and so you kind of like have to work through that with them and, and just let them know that it's okay. And even occasionally, and, and this is not uncommon, like when you first start carnivore, especially with women, they may gain a little bit. And that's because your body is trying to refill all that, you know, nutrients that it's been starved of. Because even an, an obese person is actually a person who has been starved of nutrients. And you don't think of somebody with a lot of fat as, as starved, nutrient starved, but they are. Mm -hmm. And so your body is wanting all that to rebuild all that, to, you know, heal things. And, and it's happy. It's, it's just like, yeah, come on, give me more, give me more. And that's a hard concept for a lot of people uh, because they're so scared of gaining more. And so I really have to work with them and, you know, try to readjust that relationship because it is hard and I get it. I've been there. I get it. I know what that feels yeah. like. And so, you know, it's one step at a time, just one step at a time, make little, little steps, you know, like uh, allow yourself to, to eat. Okay. Focus on that. Don't worry about everything else. Just focus on that. And, you know, don't worry about if there's any weight gain, stay the heck off the scale for the, the transitional period, because it can be a little scary. You know, you, the, the, the weight, you know, the scale, as you know, it only tells part of the story, but we give it way, way too much value. And when you're starting something that's different, that's going to maybe mess with you a little bit at first, the scale is not the best way to do it. It is just not. Awesome. I was actually going to ask you what, what the biggest fear is when people are starting a meat-based diet, but I think you probably answer that unless you have something else. <laughs> you want to um, <laughs> well, there's different things. I mean, a yeah. lot of people, they're like, but my cholesterol, mm. my cholesterol, you know, so some are a little bit worried about that kind of thing. Um, it seems like a lot of people who come to me have already done some research, yeah. so they already kind of have a base for it. There's very few people who are just, you know, have done nothing and they're like, okay, tell me how to do this. Yeah. I, I don't get that. I'm not saying they're not out there, but I haven't had anybody like that. They're, they're all just wanting that support and, you know, they have different fears. I, I, I fear like I can't stick with something. I, I'm afraid I'm going to gain weight. That's the biggest one because I feel like I'm eating too much. Um, you know, those kind of things. Or what about all the nutrients in, in vegetables? Don't I need those? You know, th there are some concerns like that, but those are pretty easy to, to work with. But the, the fear, the, the emotional, the mental, uh, that part is the hardest to deal with. I lost your picture. That was me. Yeah, there <laughs> okay, <go>. there we go. <laughs> okay. So what, what do you say to people that are scared about the cholesterol? Because the cholesterol might go up. This is true. Yes. Um, yeah. And a, a lot of times, because I'm not an expert on that, but for me, sure. um, I, the one thing I do like to do is refer them to Sean Baker's book because he just has everything broken down so well. Uh, the carnivore diet. Yeah. And um, it, it's in a very easy way to understand. And I just told them, you know, look, the thing is what you ingest has little to do with the, the cholesterol that you actually have, you know, floating around there. Because if you're not eating the cholesterol, your body is going to make it anyway. Mm -hmm. Your body decides how much cholesterol you're going to have. And it, it don't really care. I mean, you know, there's other factors that, that go along with it. What is it that's making that cholesterol number high? 
Is it your HDL? Because you want that. You want a good number on that, you know, a high number. That's pretty good for that. Or, you know, you're a little bit worried about trigs if they're too high. Yes. And especially if you have other issues going on, it just kind of, it's, it's all in a matter of uh, what else is going on. It, it's not just one thing. Yep. If you have high trigs and then you have these other symptoms too, there might be a problem. But generally speaking, you know, that's really not an issue for carnivores as far as that goes. And, you know, and some people, you know, they haven't had their cholesterol done. And so when they do have it done and it appears high, they're like, oh my God, it's so high. But how do you know? How do you know that it wasn't, you know, twice that because you haven't had it tested in a long time? And that would be me too. It's been a long time since I've had uh, my cholesterol tested. So if I had it tested now, I wouldn't really have anything to compare it to. So I would have to just kind of look at it and go, okay, this is a reference and, you know, and go from there. But, you know, I I try to tell them for the most part, cholesterol is really not that big of a deal unless you have uh, some other underlying issues along with some, you know, like the high trigs and et cetera. Yeah. Fair enough. So I'm, I'm, I'm always walking, asking people this question, so I'm going to ask you to, um, in terms of food cravings or sugar cravings, do you think that there's a difference in the amount of cravings that people get when they're on a keto diet versus when they are on a, a carnivore diet? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I, I, you know, it's got to depend on the person. Um, the one thing I will say that when I transitioned, when I was on keto, like I said, I was like never hungry. I mean, mm. one meal a day, that was it. I just, I was good. I was good. But when I transitioned to carnivore, I was hungrier. It wasn't a craving though. It was a hunger. Yeah. And I, I have no doubt it was my body just saying, oh, okay, you're giving me some nutrients finally. Yeah. Because even on keto, I see where I made some mistakes. I see where I focused way too much on the whole macro, you know, you, you got to meet your macro. Mm -hmm. You got to have, you know, globs and globs and globs of fat and, you know, don't have too much protein because gluconeogenesis. And we pretty much know that that's really not a major player really. I mean, I guess you could get it, you know, way out there. And some people, um, there's always going to be exceptions, but yeah. for the average person, that's just really not a concern. But, you know, on keto, ooh, and I even gave this advice, you know, oh, uh, maybe your protein's too high if mm-hmm. you're not, you know, in ketosis. Maybe, you know, if you're really keeping your carbs low, it could be you might want to just try lowering your protein a little. <laughs> Oh my God, you know, (laughs) but you live, you learn. And so there was things on keto that I definitely don't think were the best, but I was not hungry. I didn't crave. It was, that part was awesome. But when I did move to carnivore, like I said, the hunger was more. So I actually have to have two meals a day. Um, I'm not eating as much as I did in the beginning, but I still don't feel comfortable not having that first meal at lunch. Uh, because uh, I would be just grumbly, grumbly, grumbly in my tummy till dinner. I mean, I could do it. I, I fasted. Um, and, and I kind of fast every day because I'm just not hungry when I wake up. So I basically skip breakfast. It's not that I'm, you know, doing a clock and saying, oh, I can't eat until 16, 18, 20 hours, whatever. No, I don't do that. But um, most days it's between 16 and 20 hours. I fast just because of the way it works. Um, cause I don't eat breakfast, but yeah. Um, I cravings, uh, I suppose like people who were on keto and did a lot of the, uh, desserts and the treats and the fat bombs and those kind of things. And then they moved to carnivore and right there at that beginning part, I'm sure that those cravings are still there because you're still triggering, triggering yes. and feeding that addiction by having a sweet taste, which I didn't really fully understand that, but luckily I was able to wean off. So that it worked for me, but it doesn't work for everybody. Some people just can't do that. So, you know, I suppose those kind of people when they do, uh, you know, transition will have more of a issue with the wanting the sweets, not the carbs, because they probably, if they were keto, you know, they already got rid of the carbs, but there's still all those sweet things and dairy too. So, you know, we already talked about that. So, yeah. 
And, and I, I don't really have too many people I talk to who have been keto and then gone carnivore and had an issue with sugar addiction. It was kind of more the people who either were not fully keto, they were more low carb kind of on the way far in, or they were kind of more standard American diet. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. So just out of curiosity, what, what do you eat in a day? Like what, what do your meals look like? Okay. Well, uh, to give you an idea what I had today, and, and this is pretty much what I have almost every single day for lunch, mm-hmm. unless we have like leftovers or something. And I do you know, vary it here and there, but I would say probably 85% of the time, this is what I have. I have a ground beef patty. I don't know. Some people call it mince and, and I make it into a burger and it's like eight to 10 ounces of that. And I cook it in the oven and with like just a pat of butter on there. And that's what I have for lunch. I do use spices. I, I'm a person who I like my spices, but it doesn't have sugar and, you know, all those awful ingredients in it. It's very basic spices and quality spices. So um, I'll do that. And then that's all I have for lunch. I don't eat breakfast. And I drink a lot of this, a tapatico. It's just sparkling mineral water. Um, and for dinner, a lot of the times I have the same thing I had for lunch. Uh, yesterday was my birthday and we went out last night for dinner and I had a lobster tail, a filet and some Wagyu bacon. So, you know, occasionally we'll do something like that. Yeah. Oh, and it was you know, some good stuff. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good restaurant and they, they have the Wagyu bacon that that's pretty pretty darn good um i normally don't eat bacon (laughs) yeah oh it's good let me tell you um yeah i i normally don't eat bacon very often i used to eat it with every every meal uh, like five to seven slices and i i was trying to because i'm i'm entering that menopause age and so i've been kind of trying to lower my fat a little bit and up my lean protein just a little because at our my age it's you know kind of a normal thing to to do so I was like okay I'll try that so I cut out the bacon and believe me I was a bacon a holly because I loved it but um anyway so yesterday was special so I had my bacon and um on weekends usually Friday and Saturday I'll have a filet for dinner instead of a hamburger patty and occasionally if I make like I'll make roast and I'll have the meat roast uh you know just just the plain meat that's all mm-hmm. I have and I'll usually make like a cream type of uh, keto gravy for my mom and my husband because they, they don't really like just plain meat, especially my husband. He's just not a big fan of that. So I'll do like a little something for them. And uh, let's see. I also uh, will have like elk, bison, venison, wild hog. My boys are hunters. So we have a lot of wild nice. game um, and I'll, I'll eat that. But I, I, nowadays I just really, really like beef. I, I don't know. That's just something I've kind of settled on, but I will occasionally, and, and I'll sometimes have salmon, but that's pretty much the extent of what I eat really. Wow, I don't so- really have cheese once in a great while. I may take a bite of cheese or something, yeah. but it's rare. Um, I, I do occasionally have cream and coffee, but I've been trying to weed out, wean out uh, the coffee because I don't drink black coffee. I want the cream. That's yeah. it's like a little coffee with my cream. Yeah. And so I've had to really, really, you know, and now it's just a couple of times a week where it was twice a day. So I'm getting there, but oh, well, that's good. addiction's real. I mean, you think you can't get addicted to dairy? Yes, you can. <laughs> God, yeah. But that's pretty much it. That, that's about the extent of it. So. Awesome. So th- this is very interesting. So th- you, you're pretty much a high protein girl, I would say. Yeah. 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 I eat no vegetables, none. It's up for unless uh, no plant based food except no. for spices. So, yeah. No, I was just, um, cause I spoke to, um, Sylvia, God, what's her Instagram handle again? I forget. <laughs> uh, it will come to me. Um, and she was experimenting a lot with doing high fat, high protein and her ratios. And in general, I've seen women, tend to do better on a higher fat ratio in general, but she was very high protein. And it sounds like you are doing really well on very high protein and not so much fat as well. So now I found yeah. two 
<laughs> yeah. Well, it just, it just kind of depends on the person yeah. and especially like what point in life you are. Like there's been uh, some of my friends who are pretty high profile carnivores uh, on Instagram who are changing things around. They're in the, still in the, I guess you'd say childbearing years yeah. where their hormones are not quite working like they should where they're losing their periods and stuff like that. So yeah. they've had to kind of uh, up the fat and some of them have even put in strategic uh, carbs, uh, you know, good yeah. carbs, not, not, not the wheat and all that mess yeah. or processed foods, but very specific carbs back into their diet to use as a tool to help them, you know, with, with their hormones. And my age group is kind of, the opposite. I mean, we still need the the help with the hormones, but we're not needing as much as the fat normally. I mean, th there's always exceptions. There are going to be some people who just work better with higher fat. I mean, yeah. you just have to experiment with your body. No two people are identical. I mean, you can make a general statement, but that doesn't mean it applies to everybody. It can't. Yeah. And that's the part with nutritional science. It just can't apply to everybody. Even if everything was perfect, everything else was perfect. You know, the, the way they did the studies, the, you know, labs, whatever you want to say, if they actually did it right, it still can't apply to everybody because we're very different. Yes. And that's the one concept that I feel very strongly about. And it, and it really kind of aggravates me when people are so dogmatic, like you absolutely, you must do this. You mm -hmm. must eat, you know, 90% of your calories needs to be fat. And don't you eat more than 10% protein or whatever. I'm, I'm making that <laughs> up, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and it's like, no, that can't work for everybody. It can't. And, and it's not going to work for everybody. Now, if it works for you, great. That's awesome but it doesn't mean it's going to work for me. And it doesn't mean it's going to work for me tomorrow. If it worked today, yeah. it, your body is forever, you know, it's, it's always evolving. And that's something I'm learning because what worked for me before is not working anymore. So oh I'm having to, you know, tweak and do things and experiment and try to figure out what does it's because your body changes those hormones. And let yep. me just tell you, they're going to dictate things <laughs> and you just got to kind of roll with it. <laughs> just go with the flow. And I it. think a lot of the time people do something and they get things working and then all of a sudden it stops working and they yep. don't realize that actually I can change things. You just keep going with what has been working because it was working before. So it should be working now. So exactly. I think that's a very, very important thing to you know keep in mind that you might have to tweak down the road yeah you absolutely do because your body is not you know staying in one place you age your hormones change your stress levels change your everything i mean it just changes and so yeah. you got to be willing to adapt with it and sometimes that means your diet too mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely so what's your best advice for people who want to start a carnivore diet? <laughs> uh, well, it kind of depends on where they're coming from. I would say, you know, a lot of people believe that when you're first starting out, you should stick with meat, salt, and water, period. Mm -hmm. Not even spices, not even whatever. Okay, that would not have worked for me because within the first week I would have been... I'm over it. I can't stand meat without spice. No, nope, not working for me. So you have to know what kind of person you are. Uh, there's different approaches and there's a whole spectrum of carnivore. And don't let anybody tell you that you have to fit in this one category in order to be considered a carnivore. That's a bunch of crap. If you're eating mostly animal-based foods, you're, you're, you call yourself whatever you want but as far as I'm concerned you're you're eating carnivore the, you, there's too many labels so just don't worry about that and so what if somebody doesn't consider you a carnivore because you have spices or you drink coffee or whatever who cares it doesn't matter so just you know do you do what works for you because this is something that needs to be sustainable and yes. if it's not you know palatable to you if it's not uh if that one cup of coffee makes or breaks you have the cup of coffee yeah. 
and work on maybe trying to, as you go along, get rid of it or something. If it's giving you issues, if it's not, who cares then there's plenty of people who do just fine with it. It just depends on your individual person. I guess my best advice is don't fall into the trap of dogma. Do not let anybody tell you what you have to do for your body because nobody knows your body, but you, and it's really, the diet is not difficult. It's, it's the easiest thing you're going to do. So that part, you don't even need to figure it out. <laughs> it's just pretty easy. If it comes from an animal and you don't have any issues with it, like some people may have an issue with pork or, you know, dairy. So depending on where you fall, it, stick with the animal kingdom and you're good. And if you want to add a few spices, just make sure there's not sugar and stuff in it. Go for it, whatever. If you really need that cup of coffee and it's just going to make it just a horrible experience, have your coffee. I guess that'd be the best thing. Just don't let people tell you that you have to do it one way or you're wrong. Yeah. Because it's not wrong if it works for you and it keeps you being able to be the diet to be sustainable because it's a lifestyle. And I know that word's thrown around all the time. It's a cliche, but um, it's true. You got to look at it as something that's not going to end. This is how you're going to live your life. And I'm not saying you can't ever go back and have a vegetable or whatever. That uh, I'm not saying that. But for the most part, if you're going to make a change, that needs to be something that you continue because you can't do this and then go, oh, I'm going to start eating cupcakes again and, you know, potato chips. It doesn't work that way. Not if you want to keep your health. Yeah. Not if you want to maintain weight loss or whatever it is your goals are. Now, if you want to be a, you know, couch potato, obese, unhealthy person, okay, yeah, that's probably a good thing to do. But, you know... <laughs> So yeah, just do you and, and whatever works so you can have it be sustainable for you. And that's a big thing Sean Baker actually talks about in in his book. He'll, he'll say that if something is not, you know, palatable to you, you're not going to stick with it. And that's the same with organ meat. Are, are organ meats good? Yes, they are. And I, I wished I liked them. I do Mm. not. So I don't eat them. (laughs) <laughs> and I mean, if, if it was ground up in my burger or something like that, okay, sure. I'll eat it, whatever. Um, and I've tried, I, I don't enjoy it. And if you told me in order to be a carnivore, you have to eat that. Well, see ya. Yeah. Cause I'm not doing it, <laughs> you know, cause it's not something I know. I, I can't maintain that for the rest of my life because it's nasty. I don't like it. Or if I have to eat sardines or whatever, sardines are nasty to me. I'm not eating yeah. it. So, you I know, <laughs> Like, no, that's that's good as what i always say you know no matter what the diet is it has to work for you yes even if you choose to be a vegan if that's the only thing that you like eating then that's probably the only thing that's going to work for you are you going to be healthy yeah. maybe not but you know yeah well yeah i was about to yeah <laughs> yeah but you know, hey, some people it really may be okay for, but you still, regardless, there are some supplementations you have to do. But yeah. if you're doing those and you like it and you're healthy and you know, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, not going to be me. <laughs> no, not me either. Um, there was something you said before that for some people they might have to add a little bit of carbs. So if if someone felt like, I know for me when. I, I try to go really strict and just have salt and meat just as an experiment. And I lasted about 16 days and then I, I'm never depressed, but everything was, it, it was like, why, why am I even alive? What's the purpose of life? Wow. That kind of doom and gloom. And then I had a bowl of blueberries and I felt okay, literally. And then I had a bowl the next, next day again. It's just like, Oh my God, I love blueberries. So, I don't know what was going on there. Some people think that I didn't eat enough fat, but I had a lot of Wagyu burgers and I tried to kind of get my fat up and it didn't seem to make a difference. Maybe that's what it was anyway. I, I don't know, but what, what, what sort of carbs would you recommend that people actually go to if they feel like they need to add some carbs? Oh yeah, that's interesting. And, and I think it also depends on what's going on. Like, uh, one of the, one of the girls I was telling you about that has put some, uh, carbs back in. One of the things they do is like this, uh, raw carrot salad thing. There's, 
the, the mixture of, mm-hmm. of the carrots with something else where normally carrots, I'd be going, Ooh, and then mm-hmm. raw vegetables, ugh, you know, but there's something <laughs> about the combination or whatever, what they needed for their body. So really it's very individual. I would not ever suggest doing stuff like bananas and, um, pineapple and grapes or, um, uh, I don't, know, potato, I, I don't know. Some people okay with potatoes. It just kind of depends what that, but the, the, not, not the starchy stuff. Yeah. You're blinking. Yeah, I <laughs> You're <screaming. laughs> but uh, yeah, there's, I mean, if you wouldn't eat it on keto, definitely don't eat it as a carnivore trying to, you know, go back. I, I wouldn't. And there are some people who uh, will eat honey, like a little bit of honey. And some people in carnivores include honey because it comes from an animal, technically, <laughs> the bee. So, you know, so it's kind of one of those things. Some people do okay with honey. And sometimes it, it, I, I don't know the exact reasoning behind that. It, I know some of it has to do with metabolic flexibility, but there, there, there's something to it. But um, I don't know if they, but I think sometimes also when you have, cravings like that, or you feel that fatigue, which can kind of feel like depression and you you start craving, it's a low electrolytes. Mm. So that's a possibility. I would definitely do that. Sometimes just taking a little bit of salt, like a Redmond real salt, that's like a really good mineral based salt. And uh, that has like some little minerals in it too. You just put a little in your palm and just kind of, you know, eat it or add a little bit to your water, um, that kind of thing, or the electrolyte drops that are a combination of electrolytes. Those can be good too. That's the first thing I would try to just see if maybe it's that. And a lot of times that's during the transitional period. Um, yeah, yeah. And that can happen too later on. Like if you're just, you know, depleted uh, of electrolytes, like you've been drinking a lot of water because you're hot and you're flushing everything along with the electrolytes that can happen. So, um, I would try that first for sure. But, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. If you have some blueberries, um, here and there, if you just really want them, feel like you need them. Um, it's your life. It's your diet. It's something you have to sustain and something that has to work for you. And just because it's not something I want to eat or feel like my health needs it or my body or whatever, doesn't mean somebody else doesn't. Maybe they do great with that. And even after being on carnivore a while and, and, and you did it because you had certain health issues, sometimes you're healed enough, your gut heals enough to where you might be able to add a few little things back in. And yep. you know what, if it's not hurting you, if, if you don't have to worry about all these anti-nutrients, you know, because you're, you're very damaged, um, you know, and if that makes you happy and it's not like you're eating a ton of bananas or something, <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. I can't really say what specific mm. because like normally I would say, Oh, you know, like broccoli would be good or, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. spinach, but spinach now, <laughs> you know, after doing so much research on oxalates, I'm like, I'm a little, you know, I don't want to recommend certain things because yeah. of the content of oxalates or other anti-nutrients that, that, you know, are pretty commonly common causes of issues. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I just avoid it all, so I don't have an issue with it. It's easier that way. Yeah, it really is. And I don't miss it. I don't care. So it's all good. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Do you have any final words of wisdom you want to share with people? Uh, well, kind of basically what I've said before. Find yeah. what works for you, for your body, and do not worry about what anybody else says because it's your life, you're an adult, you get to make the decisions, yeah. <laughs> and you get to define what your diet is. Nobody else gets to define that for you. So, yeah. you know, take take little steps, take the little steps, and change that relationship with your food. And it, it should, and you hear this, it should be about nutrition, you know, and, and I used to roll my eyes with that 20, oh, okay, nutrition, I want to taste it, whatever. But it is true when you kind of change that outlook, it doesn't mean you don't enjoy your food. It doesn't mean you don't eat what you like. It just means you don't revolve your whole entire flipping life around food. 
And that to me is one of the most liberating feelings yes. ever because you're not thinking about it 24 seven. Yeah. You don't have to have hordes of food with you because you're going to be away from the house for four hours. Oh my God, you might starve yeah. or go on a, uh, you know, on the lake for the day in a boat. <gasps> oh my gosh, we got to make sure we have tons of snacks, you know, to, in case we get stranded or whatever, you know, it, you don't Crazy. worry about that anymore. <laughs> you just don't. So it's completely worth it. You know, it, 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 it takes a little bit of effort in the beginning, but mm -hmm. it, it is worth it. And, and also understand it may not be for everybody and that's okay. That's okay. If, if you, if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Keto is good too. And it, you, if you can't really do keto, low carb is better than <laughs> a lot of other options. Yeah. Just make better choices. Try to eat real whole foods and watch the ones that have lots of the, you know, like the oxalates. So you don't, you know, end up hurting yourself or that are high in um, carb sugar content. Yeah. You know, just make the best choices and it's better than eating a standard American diet. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you. That's, um, that's some good advice, I think. So if people want to get in contact with you, where's the best place to find you? <laughs> um, I spend most of my time probably on Instagram. Yeah, kind of shocker, awesome. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm under Lone Star Keto Girl. Um, I'm also on Twitter um, and YouTube and TikTok and Facebook and it's usually some version of Lone Star Keto and some of the places wouldn't let me add in girl because it was too long so so everything get the links up but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll I do link. have a website that's lone-star-keto.com and it does have recipes and I am doing a carnivore section now it's 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 just starting I, i've been trying to work on that i figured might as well take this whole uh lockdown thing you know everybody's staying at home and do something productive so yep. that's one thing i started because i have a full out uh, keto section with just tons and tons of information and nice. i have recipes so i'm going to start doing more carnivore type recipes and getting the carnivore section populated so that's on my agenda at some point <laughs> awesome Amber, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been uh, quite educating and interesting to hear your perspective on things. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.